Hey YouTube, Untamed here. Behind me is the coolest new SUV Toyota offers today. It is a 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser 1958 edition. I love this and I actually really want one so bad. I'm just kidding. If I blink twice, please send help. Just know that, okay, for future reference. But in all seriousness, behind me at this dealership here, Ken Garf Toyota in Cheyenne, Wyoming, my hometown Toyota dealership, I actually have my next Toyota awaiting me. So inside the showroom there, they have two 2024 Toyotas sitting right next to each other. One of them is a white version of the 1958 edition Land Cruiser here, 2024. And right next to it is a 2024 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro and Underground. One of them I purchased. One of them I will be showing you guys here in the next week or two on the channel, so stay tuned. But honestly, let me know which one you would prefer to see. You guys know I've beat the 4Runner to death on my YouTube channel. I've owned several 4Runner TRD Pros, 5th generation 4Runners, okay? So I'm not really doing my YouTube channel any kind of service by buying another one of those. This here, although I'm not totally cooked up on the whole hybridization of the 2.4 liter four-cylinder turbocharged platform the iForce Max here I'm not totally psyched about it it would still be my top pick easily for a new Toyota today a new generation Toyota I should say okay we all know the fifth generation 4Runner in there is going away in 2025 there's gonna be a new sixth generation 4Runner that will have the same exact engine powertrain as this Land Cruiser here so in all seriousness I do want to kind of dissect a little bit more of the details of this 1958 edition here of this meteor shower example behind me this one is still unsold it's not spoken for so if you guys are interested in one at MSRP you can come check out this particular one at Ken Garf Toyota here in Cheyenne but I want to show you a little bit more of the inside a little bit more of the details so I'll stop blabbing let's get into it and no I promise you I'm not being held hostage by Toyota corporate right now saying positive things about a new generation Toyota this legitimately is the only newer Toyota that I would actually honestly consider. And well, there could very well be one awaiting me inside that showroom right now, you'll see. But let me talk through the reasons why. It's built entirely out of Japan, we talked through that before, but most notably in this video, compared to my last one, I really just wanna dissect the interior with you and just show you what makes it extra special. So I, in my opinion, I really do appreciate the cloth interior. I know when you say it out loud, it's hard to get amped about it, but personally, I do think, I don't know. Personally, it adds to the appeal to me. So you guys let me know if I'm a wonky donkey for that, but I don't know. I think it just adds to the whole simplistic feel of what I have come to expect from Toyota anyway. The price tag is still too much in my personal opinion. It's still a little bit more than what I would feel great paying, but let's face it, all Toyotas are wicked expensive now, but this little sticker right here makes me kind of loosely loosely justify it in my own mind so 100 percent built out of japan that's pretty cool the japanese take tremendous pride in building this vehicle there is no denying that let's unlock it show you the back seat of that cloth <laughs> cloth interior look at that and it's just it's not your I've sat in a lot of cloth interior vehicles, okay, and they're obviously largely underwhelming all the time, but this does feel a little bit different. It feels a little bit more rugged, just, to, just feels a little bit more durable to the touch. It feels like it's going to age well, if you can even say that. But overall, I just love that. I'll show you the back, then we'll fire it up for fun. Look at me, look at me expecting it to pop up. Another part of the appeal, really, is just having a manual hatch, not having to worry about anything failing back here when it comes to electronic shut, open and close, right? So none of that, manual hatch. Here is the back cargo area. Plenty of space depth-wise, but of course you do get the hindrance of this is your, your battery pack, right? The battery pack of the hybrid, hybridized platform here is elevating it up. Is it made about four or five inches? Okay, get a little mat out back in this one. I think the story they had a buyer for this one, but he fell off last second, so this one is available. Do love that color meteor shower, I think that is pretty unique. You just don't see too many vehicles with that shade 
of gray. It's like a tannish gray. I really like that. It's obviously pretty cloudy out today, but I do appreciate the level of metallic flake within this. I feel like it gets overlooked when you just kind of whip past it with the camera here. A little better shot. Pretty boring wheels, not a fan of that. Let's dissect this really quick. Kind of show you what makes this one a little bit more expensive than the rest, okay? So here is the price tag, 60,443. I showed this the other day, so I'm not totally gonna beat this to death, but a little bit more in detail up here anyway. So this is that 2.4 liter, four cylinder turbocharged platform, 326 horsepower, and 465 foot pounds of torque. That is pretty wild coming out of a four banger, those kind of figures. It's hard, again, hard to get super amped about it being a four banger, but I mean, the, the numbers won't lie at the end of the day. So that is pretty impressive. Largely that torque is thanks to the, the battery pack, right? Um, full time four wheel drive, kind of an iconic staple for the Land Cruiser at large. You do have the electronically controlled locking rear and center diff lock. Uh, separate center diff as well as crawl control the, the standard stuff that we've come to expect from like TRD Pros Forerunner Tundra Sequoia you name it uh, downhill assist control and dry mode select the multi-terrain selection you get that right Here is the additional bits driving that price tag up even more over your base of fifty six thousand dollars about some of these I could definitely do without right but Personally, this top, or excuse me, the second one down, the roof rack, 14, over 1400 bucks, kind of pricey, but I really do like that. I think that finishes the look of the 250 series here, the Prado. I think it does look good up top. It's kind of kind of reminiscent of what we found with my previous 200 series, my 2020 and 2021 Lane Cruiser Heritage Edition. It just kind of, I don't know actually fits the look of it. Whereas even arguably with the Heritage Edition, they just had a Yakima Mega Warrior roof basket tacked on the top. Kind of a kind of a cheap basket just to throw up there on a $90,000 vehicle. So this even looks, I would argue, a little bit better when it comes to the roof rack. Um, I don't know, originally when it comes to the headlights, you can either of course get the round circular ones here. This is on the 1958 edition as well as the first edition. But the quote unquote standard mid-tier, mid-grade Land Cruiser trim, you do get the rectangular ones, which I originally liked them better. I'm seeing a lot more of these round ones out of the gate. Okay, let's fire it up for fun, if you guys are interested in that. Those little FJ Cruiser-esque mirrors. Do have a driver grab handle as well as a passenger, always worth noting. Like the steering wheel, like the classic heritage script, Toyota font across, foot on brake, push to start. Do have that full digital gauge display now, as well as a eight inch, uh, kind of a smaller, a little more subtle on the 1958 edition um, infotainment over here. So I'm just gonna get your binoculars on to read some, <laughs> read that message at the beginning. So pretty small, but again, because it is small, it's not it's not protruding anymore, and I like that. Don't love the gloss black plastic up there, piano gloss black. I never love that, but it's not in abundance. So here's all your off-roading goodies. We talked through that. Your center diff lock, your rear um, rear diff lock, your four high, four low. You can push and toggle back and forth, which is interesting. There's your downhill assist control as well as your crawl control and your drive modes here. Um, I do wish we had larger knobs up here. We've talked about that before. Just a, a knob for the climate control rather than, you know, toggle switches to adjust everything. The fan speed knobs are just easier, especially if it's in the middle of the winter, trying to crank that heat up with mittens on or whatever. It's nice to do that. Yeah, otherwise, all the controls that we have come to, to love and, and get used to really with any kind of Toyota, right? Pretty standard stuff on the steering wheel, your phone controls, volume, uh, adaptive cruise control here, Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, I believe here we have on the Land Cruiser, um, lane keep assist. Yeah, some just additional tech safe, safety nannies. Black headliner, which is nice. That is one difference between the, the 2024 Forerunner and the Land Cruiser. You get that tan gray, tan headliner in the Forerunner still. 
Land Cruiser embossed over here. Lots of chintzy, cheap plastic feeling materials in here. But to me, that kind of adds to the appeal to some de degree. And I, I kind of say that, I don't know, guys, I kind of speak out both sides of my mouth, I understand, but I appreciate less is more, really. You know, I'd rather spend $60,000 for this compared to $77,000 for that first edition, which is essentially the same thing, but just has some additional, you know, nicer materials. But yeah, guys. I think I've beat this up plenty, but let me know seriously what you prefer to see between the 1958 edition, it'd be a white one, 1958 edition Land Cruiser or an underground 2024 Forerunner TRD Pro, which we've seen on the channel 39 times at this point. So let me know if I'm a good YouTuber, what direction am I going, guys? As always, I do sincerely appreciate you taking the time to watch. Uh, and again, I've mentioned it a couple times, but this one here is available at Ken Garve Toyota here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, you can ask for Kevin Harris. He's a GM, and he'll probably give you a good deal. So, as always, appreciate you watching. Until next time, guys.